Hello, my name is Sinan Antoun. I'm an Iraqi writer living in New York. I'm very happy to be part of this wonderful festival. Today, I will read from my last novel, The Book of Collateral Damage, which was translated into English by Jonathan Wright. It came out uh, last year from Yale okay. University Press. And the paperback Hello. just Hello. came out this week. And the original Arabic is called Fehris, which came out uh, 2016. So I will read four short excerpts, um, three of them in Arabic as well, so you get a, a, a taste of the original. Uh, but I just want to say a few things about the premise of the novel. Um, the premise of the novel is about an Iraqi who lives in the United States, who goes back to Baghdad in 2003, a few months after the U.S. invasion and occupation. He goes back with a, a documentary film crew, uh, and there he meets um, a bookseller in one of Baghdad's famous book markets at Mutanebi Street. And that bookseller has a unique project whereby he wants to document uh, the collateral damage of the war, but not humans, uh, only fauna and flora and everything, and it's minute by minute. And uh, after the uh, one of the narrators goes back to New York, there is a correspondence between the two. And in the book, we also have uh, the manuscript, which is the history of the collateral damage of the war, minute by minute, but of course it's in fragments and excerpts. And I won't say more, but uh, now I'll read one of the excerpts uh, whereby the book collector Wadud is talking. Um, did I tell you that I can hear things speaking? Yes, I can hear what they say. They know me and sometimes they call me by name and beg me to listen. Sometimes they talk like people, slowly and with a logic that's easy to understand. But they can also groan and snarl and scream. I can hear their screams with painful clarity, and I don't understand them. No, that's not true. I understand them well because I know they're suffering the same things that I am suffering. And in many cases, they can't say what's troubling them. They scream with all the strength, all the misery, anger, and despair they have. What do I do when I hear their constant screams? In the beginning, I would block my ears with my hands. But that didn't silence the screaming. It just made it sound a little distant. Then I felt pangs of guilt, and I accused myself of narcissism. The least I could do is feel solidarity with things and scream them. Yes, scream them. That's the right expression. And you haven't misunderstood it. Maybe it's me who coined it. I've certainly never read it anywhere before. So I decided not to ignore the screaming of the things. It's not enough to open your heart wide. The heart isn't enough. I open my ears. And whenever anything or any creature shouted at me, I would try to calm it down. Sometimes I succeeded, and often I failed. I would add my screams to the screams of the thing. I would scream at it, and it would scream at me until I collapsed from fatigue. I have grown used to this. And now it's normal, as far as I'm concerned. But human beings, the vast majority of whom are heartless or have deaf hearts that can't hear what I hear, run far away from me when I take part in a screaming session. If any of them do come close to me, then they do so in order to force me to stop. They think it's an illness, and that's the medical profession, that, that the medical profession can cure it. But I know it's a rare talent. Once I dreamed that everyone endowed with this talent gathered on the stage in a theater, as if they were in an orchestra. They wore smart black clothes and sat in chairs in regular rows. When I came in, they all stood up, and the audience stood up and clapped warmly. I bowed to the audience. Then I turned and clapped for the orchestra and motioned to them to sit down. They didn't have any instruments or any scores in front of them. 
their throats would do. All I had was the baton that I picked up to give them the signal to start. And so they did. Their screams rose to the heights. They flew across the open dome of the theater to the sky where the deaf ears of the gods are. What happens after that in the dream? Whenever one of the people screaming falls down, two men come and drag his body into the wings, and a new screamer soon takes their place. Then I too collapse from exhaustion and wake up. So which things talk to me, you might ask? All of them. A solitary piece of paper cut out of a book flying down the street. A loose pebble hurt by passers-by when they tread on it. A frightened cloud escaping its fate. A head of lettuce trembling at the sight of a knife. A brick massacred by a builder with a sledgehammer. A sad statue drenched in the urine of passerby. A tree branch with its back broken. A word in the dictionary that no one uses any longer. A drop of water clinging to the mouth of the tap before it falls and so on. Animals also talk to me, of course. A hungry fly, a stray cat, an old donkey that's tired of being enslaved, a goldfinch that sings to me from its cage. Dead people, not the living. The dead call out to me. I once read a sentence Paul Klee wrote. I live just as well with the dead as with the unborn. I'd like to read now three short excerpts, but I will read them first in Arabic and then in English. منطق الفهرس في البدء كان الانفجار أليس هذا ما تقوله النظرية السائدة والمقبولة لكن ربما كان ذلك الانفجار الهائل صرخة الكون وبكاء وهو يخرج من رحم العدم إلى ألم الوجود هذا الكون الذي كبر بسرعة ضوئية فبدلا من أن يزحف أخذ يطير بكل اتجاه بمليون جناح وكوكب في البدء كان الانفجار والوجود بأكمله غابة من الشظايا التي تتطاير وتهرب في الظلام الكوني شظايا أصبح بعضها كوكبا واستقر في مدار حزين والبعض الآخر محض غبار كوني مهين وأنا أحاول أن أجمع شظايا انفجار صغير نثار أصنع منه عقدا كي أعلقه نعم أعلقه ولكن أين أين أعلقه حول عنق الفراغ مهمتي هي بالضبط عكس مهمة القابلة أو طبيب الولادة الذي يقص الحبل السري بعد الولادة فأنا أعيد نسج الحبال السرية بين الأشياء وبين أمهاتها أعيد الأوتار إلى الأعواد المحترقة أعيد الدمعة إلى العين إنه عمل متعب لا ينتهي وأعدائي كثيرون أحيانا أظن أنني أنكبوت فاشل يصطاد الفراغ So now I'll read it in English It's called the colloquy of the catalog which is the book itself, the Book of Collateral Damage. In the beginning was the explosion. Isn't that what the prevalent accepted theory says? But maybe that massive explosion was the universe screaming and weeping as it emerged from the womb of nothingness into the pain of existence, this universe that expanded at the speed of light. Instead of crawling, it began to fly in every direction with a million wings and stars. In the beginning was the explosion. The whole universe is a jungle of fragments flying apart in the cosmic darkness. Some of those fragments have become a star that has settled into a sad orbit. Others are just cosmic dust that floats around. I am trying to put together the fragments of a little explosion. Dust particles from which I can make a necklace I can hang. Yes, hang it. But where? Umbilical cords after birth. I reattach the umbilical cords between things and their mothers. I restring burnt roots. I put the tear back in the eye. 
It's tiring work that never ends. And I have many enemies. Sometimes I think I'm a failed spider that's hunting in the void. Now I'll read the third um, excerpt again in Arabic um, before I read it to you in English. أقشر اللحظة بيدي كأنني أقشر برتقالة لكنها برتقالة زرقاء كما في قصيدة إلوار الشهيرة يدخل قشر الزمن تحت أظافري وتدخل رائحته إلى أنفي لا أعرف كيف أصفها هذه الرائحة سوى أنني أصبح طفلا يكتشف كل شيء للمرة الأولى بأصابعه وفمه وعينيه لا الطفل الذي كنته ذات زمن طفل آخر لا أعرف بلا ذكريات وبلا لغة حين أكمل تقشيرها أحاول أن أشطرها فينبثق منها بحر هائل يغمرني أغوص فيه وأتنفس كسمكة أتعب وأنام عاريا على قاعي حين أستيقظ أجدني على أرض مدية واللحظة الثمرة على تراب تنتظر عندما كنت فراشة الفراشة أمي كانت أمي فراشة وضعت بيوضها في لحظة وماتت كل البيوض إلا التي كنت فيها وعندما فقست بيضتي أخذت أدب وأكل وأنسل من جلد إلى آخر حين يوم طارت أمي ولم تعود نسجت شرنقتي من دموعي وخوفي اختبأت فيها وانتظرت طويلا كادت الوحدة أن تفترسني فتسللت من شرنقتي طرت أبحث عن أمي رأيت مئات الفراشات ولم يكن أمي كنت أنساها ثم أخذني جناحايا إلى طاولة في حديقة ينام عليها كتاب مفتوح تقلب أوراقه المسمى ولمحت جثة أمي بينها أمي تكفنها الكلمات I peel the moment by hand as if peeling an orange. But it's a blue orange, as in Elwad's famous poem. The peel of time gets under my fingernails and the scent reaches my nose. I don't know how to describe it, except to say that I feel like a child discovering everything for the first time with his fingers, mouth, and eyes. Not the child that I once was, another child that I don't know, with no memories and no language. When I finished peeling it, I tried to break it in half, and a vast sea bursts out of it and overwhelms me. I dive into it and breathe like a fish. I grow tired and sleep naked on the seabed. When I wake up, I find myself on wet ground, and the fruit moment awaits on the ground. When I was a butterfly, the butterfly is my mother. My mother was a butterfly that laid her eggs into a moment. All the eggs died except the one I was in. When my egg hatched, I started crawling, eating and shedding skin after skin. And when the old skin wore out, my mother flew off and didn't come back. I wove my cocoon from my tears and my fear. I hid inside it and hid it a long time. The loneliness preyed on me, so I slipped out of my cocoon. I flew off looking for my mother. I saw hundreds of butterflies, but none of them was my mother. I almost forgot her. Then my wings took me to a table in a garden. On it lay an open book with a breeze turning the pages. I caught sight of my mother's body between two pages. My mother is shrouded in words. And the fourth and last excerpt, again in Arabic and then English. كل هذا يدور حولي كل هذه الكائنات والأشياء تدور حولي منذ عقود ولكل كائن أو شيء مداره الذي يحتله لوحده ودورته التي تطول وتقصر أما أنا في البداية كنت أظنني ثابتا لا أدور لكنني اكتشفت أنني أدور 
ادور حول نفسي نعم ادور حول نفسي اذا ابحث عنها ثم اكتشفت فيما بعد انني لا ادور حول نفسي فحسب فانا محبوس في مدار وادور مثل كل تلك الكائنات والاشياء ادور حول شيء ما لكنني لا اعرف ما هو قد يكون فراغا ليس شمسا بكل تاكيد ادور ولا اقمار تؤنسني لعلني ادور حول الظلام ظلام لا مرئي ظلام يختبئ في الضوء ادور وادوخ واصرخ اغيب عن الوعي وحين استعيده اجدني ما زلت ادور وادور ابحث عن ثقب اسود يعيدني الى العدد All this is circling around me. All these beings and things have been circling around me for decades. Every being or thing has an orbit that it occupies alone in its own orbital period, which grows longer and shorter. As for me, at first I thought I was stationary, not circling. But I discovered that I am turning. I am circling around myself, yes. I am circling around myself and looking for myself. Later I discovered that I'm not only circling around myself, but I'm also trapped in an orbit. I'm turning like all those beings and things. I'm turning around something, but I don't know what it is. It might be a vacuum. It's definitely not a sun. I'm turning and nothing keeps me company in my orbit. Maybe I'm turning around darkness. invisible darkness, darkness that hides in the light. I'm circling and feeling dizzy and screaming. I lose consciousness, and when I come around, I find I'm still turning and turning. I'm looking for a black hole that will take me back to nothingness. I want to thank you all and thank the organizers, especially Marianne Newman, and I was reading from the book of Collateral Damage, translated by Jonathan Wright from Yale University Press. Thank you all, be safe and be healthy.